this is what you often see today. You know, because people have become very superficial, how they view other people. So they, shed, so they judge you not upon your actions. They don't judge you upon, you know, what kind of character you are. They judge you by materialistic means. What car that you drive. You know, where you live. How good you're looking you are. I mean, Allah created man. Man didn't choose. And you see people, you know, drive big cars, have big bank balances, as though he's going to share that money with you. You know, a guy has a big car, and all of a sudden he has friends that he never knew about. I mean, what, what does that say about human beings? What, you're ready to suck up to a person because of a piece of metal? I mean, is this what Muslims have come down to? There was a time where people were judged upon their character. If Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had judged Bilal upon the color of his skin and his status in society, he would have never freed him. But he judged him by his khayr, he judged him by his taqwa. And this is why when he saw Bilal radiallahu anhu being persecuted, he went to Umayyah and he said, Umayyah, sell me Bilal. And Umayyah said, yeah, I'll sell him to you because you're the one who corrupted him. And he said, how much? And he said, 10 gold coins. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went home and he bought 10 gold coins and he gave it to Umayyah. And Umayyah began to laugh. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Umayyah, what's making you laugh? He said, the reason that I'm laughing is that if you had haggled with me, if you had haggled with me and you had offered me one gold coin, I would have sent, sold Bilal to you for one gold coin. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, I swear by Allah, O Umayyah, if you haggled with me and asked me for a hundred gold coins for Bilal, I would have given you a hundred gold coins because Bilal was worth it. And he freed him. And then Bilal was a slave. He was a slave. But he rose to the ranks that Abu Bakr, the Khalif of his time, would say, Sayyiduna Bilal. Umar in his time would say, Sayyiduna Bilal. Khalid bin Walid. In his time when Umar ibn al-Khattab wanted him punished and wanted his turban taken off his head, who did he send? He sent Bilal radiallahu anhu. Who was Khalid? Khalid was the cell of Walid ibn al-Mughira. He was the sword of Allah and he was the son of Walid ibn al-Mughira who was the leader, undisputed leader. People think it was Abu Talib. Walid ibn al-Mughira was the undisputed leader of Quraysh. And Bilal the slave, but when he became a Muslim, and when he became the relationship with Allah, he, Umar sent him and he took the turban off the head of Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu. But today we judge people, you know, by the clothes that they wear. Prada shoes, Cartier watch. No, what? Is this what Muslims have come down to? If you want to judge people by their looks or by the clothes that they wear, then let me tell you when the Prophet ﷺ left this dunya, he had patches. 11 on his patches. When Abu Bakr anhu left this dunya, he had 14 patches upon his clothes. When Umar ibn Abdul Aziz passed away, who was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was the most powerful man on the face of this earth. From the narration mentioned that his caliphate spanned from China to Spain, from the Caucasus to the depths of Africa. And when he was passing away, you know, he had these old clothes on. And somebody said to his wife, said, change his clothes. And she remained quiet. And then he said again, look, he's dying, change his clothes. And she remained quiet. And upon the third occasion, he said it angrily. And the wife turned to him and she said, I swear by Allah that these are the only clothes that he has. These are the only clothes that he has. But history remembers. History remembers Umar ibn Abdul Aziz because of the khair that he left behind, because of the khidmah that he did for humanity. And this is why history remembers him.